today's lecture, I will discuss a simple composite system, a composite system made up of two subsystems and you already know the subsystems. I am going to consider a two dimensional isotropic oscillator, one oscillator along the x axis and the other oscillator along the y axis. Since we have already attempted the problem of the simple harmonic oscillator, it should be possible for us to now consider two such oscillators not interacting with each other, but we are interested in looking at the system as a whole. So, this is the composite system that I am going to consider. It is a composite system of two oscillators. As such therefore, the Hamiltonian for the first oscillator which I will represent by H 1 is simply half m omega squared x squared plus p x squared by 2 m, where m is the mass of the oscillator, x is the coordinate and p sub x is the linear momentum corresponding to the coordinate x. Then there is the other oscillator, which too has the same mass, the same omega, but now it is along the y direction and therefore, I have y and p sub y. So, these are the two independent Hamiltonians and I have a situation with x p sub x commutator is i h cross identity and that is the same as the commutator of y with p sub y. Since these are independent oscillators, x with p sub y commutator is 0, similarly y with p sub x commutator is 0. That is how I take care of the fact that these are absolutely independent of each other. I could write this in terms of the raising and lowering operators. You will recall that we defined x as a plus a dagger by root 2, except that there was a root of h cross by m omega multiplying that, taking care of the right dimensions. And p sub x is simply root of m omega h cross a minus a dagger by root 2 i. I would do the same thing for the oscillator along the y axis and I would write y is equal to root of h cross by m omega b minus b plus b dagger by root 2 and p sub y as root of m omega h cross b minus b dagger by root 2 i. In other words, the ladder operators that is the raising and lowering operators for the oscillator given by this Hamiltonian h 1 are a and a dagger. The corresponding ladder operators for the oscillator with Hamiltonian h 2 those operators are b and b dagger. So, I would have a a dagger equals identity, b b dagger equals identity, every other commutator vanishes a b dagger is 0, b a dagger is 0, b with a dagger commutator is 0 and so on. So, these are the two independent oscillators. What is the composite system? The composite system has a Hamiltonian which is going to be the sum of h 1 and h 2. I could write h 1 in terms of a and a dagger as a dagger a plus half h cross omega 
Similarly, H 2 is B dagger B plus half H cross omega. The number operator corresponding to the first oscillator is A dagger A and the number operator corresponding to the second one is B dagger B. Therefore, if the states corresponding to the first oscillator are represented by this sket n sub a, by a I mean the first oscillator, by b I mean the second oscillator. So, the states which are the energy eigenstates of the first oscillator are represented by the label n sub capital A. So, my composite system is composed of system A and system B, system A being the first oscillator and system B being the second oscillator. Represent the states this way where n a can take values 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and m b can take values 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. I reiterate that a and b are simply used as subscripts to show that these are the labels corresponding to one of the oscillators and these are the labels corresponding to the second of the oscillators. And since the energy eigenstate labels take value 0, 1, 2, 3, I have these values for n a and m b. So, given this it is clear that a dagger a acting on the state n sub a simply pulls out this number and we have this eigenvalue equation. Similarly, B dagger B acts on the state M sub B to give me this. The raising and lowering operators you will recall act in the following manner. The lowering operator simply pulls out root N sub A and lowers the state label by 1 and I represent it in this manner. Similarly, B pulls out the label M B under the square root and I have a lowered state M B minus 1. The corresponding raising operators are A and A dagger, A dagger and B dagger. So, that I have the following equations. and B dagger acting on M B gives me root of M B plus 1 with a higher energy state whose label is M B plus 1. So, this is what I have by way of equations. I now find out what are the various operators in this problem which commute with each other. Since the commutator of A with B dagger vanishes and they are independent oscillators, it is clear that A dagger A with B dagger B is 0. I have the total Hamiltonian H which is A dagger A plus B dagger B plus 1 H cross omega because there was a half H cross omega from the first oscillator contributing here and another half H cross omega from the second oscillator. So, this is the total Hamiltonian for the system. It is evident that the commutator of A dagger A with H is 0 and the commutator of B dagger B with H is 0. So, I should be in a position to simultaneously diagonalize the Hamiltonian H corresponding to the composite system H 1 and H 2. Suppose I forget the 0 point energy 1 H cross omega for the moment and consider the Hamiltonian 
to be just a dagger a plus b dagger b. We can always add 1 h cross omega data and here I have set h cross equals omega equals 1 for convenience. We can always put that back adjusting dimensions appropriately. So, I will now consider this Hamiltonian a dagger a plus b dagger b and find out the eigenvalues, the energy eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenstates corresponding to this Hamiltonian and of course, a dagger a and b dagger b which I already know. It is clear that when a dagger a acts on the combined state of the system, it is merely going to act on the label n a leaving the other ket corresponding to the second oscillator alone. So, now we have reached a state where we need to define the state space of the full Hamiltonian. So, we postulate the following the state or the state space of the full Hamiltonian is made up of states which are tensor products of the states of the subsystems. In other words, the net state of the composite system is given by the tensor product of n a ket n a with ket m b. This could be treated as a postulate. It is clearly inspired by the fact that even in a single system there is a superposition principle and if you have basis states psi 1 and psi 2, a psi 1 plus b psi 2 is also a state of the system. Extending this and inspired by this, you could treat this as the postulate which says that the combined space has states which are tensor products of the subsystems eigenstates. We have to clearly understand how exactly these operators act on these states. I could use a shorthand notation for this, I could call this n a m b dropping this sign I essentially mean by this notation this object. I could make it even simpler and I could write this by this notation I would mean this I would be using all these notations interchangeably as I go along. But any of this would represent the state of the full system. Now, we have the following situation when a dagger a acts on the state n a m b it is clear that it only acts on the states corresponding to system a leaving m b as such. Therefore, it is like saying that a dagger a acts on the ket n a and the identity operator acts on the state m b. So, this gives me n a n a m b in my notation this would simply be where this is a number labeling the state and this is the net state of the system that is identical to n a and the state written this way. Similarly, when b dagger b acts on the state of the system it works in the following manner it is like the identity operator acting on the states corresponding to system A tensor producted with this and therefore, b dagger b pulls out an m b from here that is a number leaving me 
with the state N A M B. Now, let us look at operators like A dagger B. So, I extend this. First of all, B acts on the state N A M B, leaving N A alone and pulling out root M B, which is a number from here. Of course, A dagger has to operate on the net state, and the net state is now N A M B minus 1. The action of B on the ket M B was to pull out the value root M B and lower the state by 1, leaving N A as such, the ket N A as such, and then A dagger acts on the state N A. When A dagger acts on the state N A, pulls out a value root of N A plus 1, raises the state label by 1, leaving the system B untouched. So, this is the net effect of the operation of A dagger B on the state N A M B. Similarly, we can work out the action of various operators on these states. Let us look at the algebra of these operators. Now, that we have described how exactly the operators act on the states. Let us find out the commutator of the non Hermitian operator A dagger B with its Hermitian count with its counterpart B dagger A, its Hermitian conjugate B dagger A. Now, this acts on the state N A M B of the system, and what does it do? When I expand the commutator. I simply have two terms A dagger B, B dagger A acting on the state minus B dagger A, A dagger B acting on that state. I use the rules that I have been defined earlier. So, this is A dagger B, B dagger A acts on the state N A M B. First of all, A simply pulls out root N A, reducing the state label by 1, B dagger acts on M B, increasing it by 1. So, that is the effect of B dagger A on N A M B. It is clear that B dagger is the raising operator on this state and therefore, the label went up and A is the lowering operator on this state and therefore, the label went down. That is the first term minus B dagger A, which acts on the net state A dagger B ket N A ket M B. So, once more when B acts on M B, it pulls out root M B, lowering the state to M B minus 1, leaving N A untouched. And when A dagger acts on N A, it takes it to root N A plus 1 and the state label is raised by 1. So, this is how the commutator expands. So, let me proceed and complete the uh, simplification. I have in the first term the numbers root N A root M B plus 1 which I can pull out and then A dagger B acts on these states. So, B acting on M B plus 1 <coughs> and A dagger acting on N A minus 1 that is what I have here. Here A, so this would simply give me an M B and A dagger acting on N A minus 1 would take it to N A. So, the net state would be ket N A ket M B. The coefficients are obvious. B acting on M B plus 1 pulls out a root of M B plus 1 
and a dagger acting on n a minus 1 pulls out a root n a leaving behind ket n a ket m b that is from the first term. Similarly, the second term gives me the following coefficients a on ket n a plus 1 gives me root n a plus 1 ket n a and b dagger acting on ket m b minus 1 pulls out root m b increasing the label by 1. So, this is what I have for the commutator of a dagger b with b dagger a acting on the state n a m b. Let me simplify this. I have a dagger b with b dagger a acting on the state n a m b of the composite system to be simply n a m b plus 1 minus m b n a plus 1 multiplying the state n a m b. So, this is what I have, this is the commutator that I have. Now, consider the effect of the operator a dagger a minus b dagger b acting on the state n a m b. Now, this clearly simplifies n a m b cancels out and I just have n a minus m b out here. Consider the action of the operator a dagger a minus b dagger b acting on the state. This is simply n a minus m b n a m b. So, indeed it looks like I have proved that a dagger b commutator with b dagger a is twice a dagger a minus b dagger b by 2. This is the relation that I have. I have very deliberately put a 2 out here and divided by 2, so that I may define this as a Hermitian operator, where I have a commutation relation which is similar to what I knew from the SU2 algebra. I had s plus with s minus is 2 s z. So, now I would like to check if indeed I can mimic the angular momentum situation using these two oscillators. And in fact, that is the purpose of my talk today. This composite system was selected by me to see if I can reproduce the angular momentum algebra using two harmonic oscillators. If indeed I can identify this with uh, S z, I should be able to check out the analog of the commutator of S z with S plus and S z with S minus, which is what I will proceed to do now. So, let me consider the commutator a dagger a minus b dagger b by 2 with a dagger b. That is the same as the following. I could do this for instance by just applying the ABC rule. In order to make things very clear, I will do it explicitly by attempting to find out its effect on the states. In other words, I would like to repeat the procedure and find out the action of this commutator on the state n a m b. So, that is half a dagger a minus b dagger b commutator with a dagger b 
N A M B. So, this is the same as finding the commutator of A dagger A with A dagger B acting on N A M B minus half commutator of B dagger B with A dagger B acting on the state N A M B. It is pretty clear here that A dagger commutator with a dagger b is 0, I could use the ABC rule and then I find that the only non vanishing contribution comes from the commutator of a with a dagger and that is 1. Similarly, here the only non vanishing contribution in the commutation comes through the commutator of b dagger with b and that is minus 1 and therefore, this becomes a straightforward matter. So, this is the same as half I can pull out a dagger on this side commutator of a with a dagger b n a n b minus half a dagger commutator of b dagger with b b which is the same as half a dagger b from the first term and this is minus 1 and therefore, plus half a dagger b from the second term acting on n a m b which is the same as a dagger b acting on the state n a m b. In other words, I have shown that a dagger a minus b dagger b by 2 commutator with a dagger b is plus a dagger b. In a similar vein, we can find out the commutator of a dagger a minus b dagger b by 2 with b dagger a and check that this is minus b dagger a. I have therefore, got the S u 2 algebra. I have a situation where I have identified three operators, two of them being Hermitian conjugates of each other, and the third being a Hermitian operator satisfying the following commutation relationship. and this is simply the SU 2 algebra. So, I identify a dagger b as the raising operator I could call it j plus b dagger a as the lowering operator and you would recall that this is the same as the Hermitian conjugate of j plus and I can identify a dagger a minus b dagger b by 2 as j z. I would like to call this j plus, j minus and j z by way of notation, because I am not looking at a particular spin system or orbital angular momentum. This is the general angular momentum algebra, which I have generated. Therefore, I refer to these as j plus, j minus and j z. Before I proceed, I would like to comment about the dimension of the full space. Once we do a tensor product, of the individual subsystem states, the dimension increases in a certain fashion. For instance, if system 1, subsystem 1 and subsystem 2 have just two basis states, uh, this is subsystem A and that is subsystem B. Suppose they have just two basis states, this is an example that I am considering. I refer to them 
as 0 a and 1 a and 0 b and 1 b respectively. The tensor product will give me the following basis states. and the last is 1 a tensor product with 1 b. So, there are 4 basis states. It is pretty clear that if subsystem A had 3 basis states and subsystem B had 3 basis states, then you would have a total of 9 such states. Now, if I just look at qubits, each qubit is like a spin doublet there are two states as in this example and if I put a collection of n qubits, the composite system of the n qubits has 2 to the n basis states. Now, in general if I want to deal with a large system, I could take a single system with 2 to the n basis states, n being sufficiently large or I could work with a set of n qubits, each qubit having a two dimensional linear vector space as in this case. In other words, I can have small subsystems, in this case each is a qubit, a doublet, I could combine a large number of them and provide 2 to the n basis states for the composite system. Instead of choosing a single system with a very large linear vector space in the sense that it is a single system with 2 to the n basis states. Now, normally if it is a single system where the basis states are the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, the 2 to the n basis states are the energy eigenstates and therefore, reaching out to the higher energy states would mean expending that much energy. It means going to higher energy levels of a system. Instead, I could work with 2 to the n qubits with, with n qubits and provide 2 to the n basis states. That could be cheaper for me in terms of an experimental arrangement. That is merely a digression. It is a point worth remembering for our future lectures when we will talk about interacting systems. But right now getting back to this point, I can now define the analogues of j x and j y. You will recall that j plus was j x plus i j y and j minus was j x minus i j y. Therefore, j x <coughs> is j plus plus j minus by 2 and j y <coughs> was j plus minus j minus by 2 i. And therefore, I can write j x as a dagger b plus b dagger a by 2. and j y as a dagger b minus b dagger a by 2 i. I emphasize the j y is Hermitian because j minus dagger was j plus, but there is an overall negative sign and that is taken care of by the fact that i its complex conjugate is minus i. And therefore, I have these Hermitian operators, it will automatically follow that j x j y is i j z and this is a cyclic relation. This can be explicitly checked out, but it will work out simply because I have obtained the SU 2 algebra already in terms of j plus j minus and j z. Now, let me look at the action of a dagger b that is j plus on the combined state of the system. 
So, A dagger B acts on the state N A M B. As I said before, B acts on M B to pull out root M B. lowering this to m b minus 1, leaving the state ket n a alone and a dagger acts on the state ket n a, pulling out a root of n a plus 1, raising the label to n a plus 1. But I know that when j plus acts on the state j comma m, of the composite system, I should get root of j minus m times j plus m plus 1 j comma m plus 1. So, I would like to now identify little j, I know little m, little m is clearly the eigenvalue corresponding to the state j comma m corresponding to the operator j z you will recall that I have set h cross equals 1. And since j z is a dagger a minus b dagger b by 2, this implies that m is simply n a minus n b by 2. And therefore, I have identified m. It is clear that the values of m can be either integer or half integer, because when n sub a is 0 and n sub b is 0, m is 0, but when this is 1 and that is 0, for instance, I get m equals half. When n a is 0 and m b is 1, that is an m, when n a is 0 and m b is 1, it is clear that m is minus half and so on. So, this quantity m can take integer and half integer values and these could be positive or negative. That is as I would expect from angular momentum algebra. In order to identify and make the connection between root m b root n a plus 1 with root of j minus m j plus m plus 1, let me consider the total number operator n which is a dagger a plus b dagger b. Its eigenvalues are clearly the sum of the eigenvalues of a dagger a and b dagger b. So, let me call the eigenvalue corresponding to the operator n as little n that is n a plus m b. So, let us make a neat column tabular column and what do we see? When n a is 0 and m b is 0, n is 0. n a and m b can only be integers and therefore, n can only be an integer. So, let me start and, and since these are 0 or positive, n can only be 0 or positive. So, let me put n equals 1. This could come from n a equals 1 m b equals 0 or n a equals 0 m b equals 1. In other words, the eigenvalue n equals 1 could come from the state 0 a 1 b or 1 a 0 b. So, as far as the composite system is concerned, n equals 1 is a doubly degenerate state. There are two eigenstates, distinctly different eigenstates, which correspond to the eigenvalue n equals 1. Suppose n equals 2, n a could be 2 and m b could be 0, n a could be 0, m b could be 2 or n a could be 1 and m b could be 1. So, what are these states? This would be a 2 a 0 b, the second one is a 0 a 2 b, 
the third one is a 1 a 1 b. So, there are three states corresponding to n equals 2. It is obvious that the degeneracy for a given n is n plus 1. There is an n plus 1 fold degeneracy corresponding to a given n coming from various combinations of n a and n b. So, for a given n there is an n plus 1 fold degeneracy. Consider the object n by 2. So, let us make a column n by 2 n a n b when n is 0 n by 2 is 0 n a is 0 n b is 0. We might as well make a column n a minus m b by 2. So, when n is 0 n a is 0 m b is 0 and n a minus m b by 2 is 0, but this object is simply m when n by 2 is half I find that n a could be 1 and m b could be 0 giving me m equals half or n a could be 0 and m b could be 1 giving me the value minus half. So, you see it looks like n by 2 is to be identified with j and we will check it out with n by 2 equals 1. In other words when n is 2 n by 2 is 1 and what do I have? I have m values 1, 0 and minus 1. I would like to call n by 2 as j. j takes positive values 0, half, 1 and so on and for a given value of j m takes values minus j to plus j in steps of 1. And therefore, I have now identified j in terms of operators h was a dagger a plus b dagger b and what we are looking at is the operator h by 2 which is a dagger a plus b dagger b by 2. So, now returning to our problem we had a situation where a dagger b acted on n a m b to give root m b root n a plus 1 changing the state to ket n a plus 1 ket m b minus 1. So, let us look at what this is going to be consider root of j minus m into j plus m plus 1 and expand this in terms of n a and n b. This is n a plus m b by 2 minus n a minus m b by 2 that is the first term. The second term is n a plus m b by 2 plus n a minus m b by 2 plus 1 and all this within the square root under the square root. So, this is just going to be root of m b from here and this just gives me an n a plus 1 which is what I have here and therefore, it is clear that when a dagger b acts on this it acts precisely in the manner in which uh, the angular momentum raising operator acts. I have identified root m b times root n a plus 1 which is what comes out when a dagger b acts on the state as the coefficient. I have identified that with root of j minus m into j plus 1 m plus 1 where j itself is n a plus m b by 2 and m is n a minus m b by 2. Therefore, the angular momentum algebra is complete we have shown that starting with two oscillators which do not interact with each other we can produce the angular momentum algebra by suitable combinations of 
A, A dagger, B and B dagger. We have identified J x, J y and J z. We have uh, identified J plus and J minus and also checked out that uh, little j, small j can only take values 0, half, 1 and so on. And for a given j, there is a 2j plus 1 degeneracy in m. We have also checked that in terms of energy eigenvalues given n, there is an n plus 1 fold degeneracy in the case of the two dimensional oscillator. Let me now extend this to a three dimensional isotropic oscillator and at least check out the extent of degeneracy. So, in the case of the three dimensional oscillator, isotropic oscillator, I have these three independent oscillators. The notation would now be evident. H is A dagger A plus B dagger B plus C dagger C. Of course, there would have been a 3 by 2 H cross omega, half coming from each of these oscillators, but we will choose to forget that for the moment. Our aim is merely to find out the degree of degeneracy of every eigenvalue and therefore, the analog n in this case is given by n a plus m b plus l c, where a dagger a acts on the state n a to give me eigenvalue n a, b dagger b acts on the state m b to give me this eigenvalue equation and I have a corresponding equation for uh, the, the system C, the subsystem C. So, let us look at what would happen here. Each of these could take values 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. N also would take values 0, 1, 2, 3 and therefore, we make a table in the case of the three dimensional oscillator. I have N, N A, M B, L C. When N is 0, they are all 0. When N is 1, I have the following three possibilities. All these correspond to N is 1. When N is 2, I have these six possibilities and so on. It is pretty clear what is the extent of degeneracy. For a given value of n, so when n is 0, there is exactly one state, the label is 0, 0, 0 if you wish. When n is 1, there are three states. These states would carry labels 1 0 0 or 0 1 0 or 0 0 1. By this I mean this state would mean n a equals 0, n b equals 0, n c, l c equals 0 and so on. So, I have an n plus 1 times n plus 2 by 2 fold degeneracy for a given n. So, both in the case of the two dimensional oscillator and the three dimensional isotropic oscillator, there are states which are degenerate in contrast to a simple harmonic oscillator. This is the simplest composite system that we will consider uh, for the moment. Subsequently in my lectures, I will talk about interacting systems which are composite systems.